This week, we report on dying Pacific salmon populations in British Columbia, Canada. As the political chaos within Canadian fisheries management over open net farmed Atlantic salmon and wild Pacific salmon make international headlines. I think Miami can and will be the largest producer of salmon in North America. We are standing here inside the, the Miami Blue House. This is the largest uh, indoor um, aquaculture facility in the world. We are producing Atlantic salmon here. As a matter of fact, uh, at this time we have about 5 million fish swimming around in these tanks. The process starts uh, with eggs that we're importing from, from Europe and then we're growing the salmon through its life stages through fresh water and then seawater. The way salmon is produced in the industry today uh, is in remote areas of Europe or South America. So basically what is currently being done is that... It... In 2021, only 660,000 Pacific salmon were commercially harvested in British Columbia waters compared to over 40 million salmon in 1991 which is over 30 years ago when DFO was first alerted that wild salmon in British Columbia may be in trouble. The DFO, now known as Fisheries and Oceans Canada, is the arm of the Canadian government that manages all fisheries across Canada. Recent publications from the Globe and Mail and The Guardian reported that DFO suppressed a federal salmon study that showed a virus spreading at salmon farms in British Columbia was infecting both farmed and wild salmon. DFO stated that they could not release the report under the Aquaculture Collaborative Research and Development Program because the authors disagreed about the conclusions. Just this past March, after 10 years of this report not being allowed to be published, the Federal Information Commissioner of Canada ordered the DFO to release the information that found pathogens among open net fish farms in the province ruling that suppressed publication of the document was not justified. Take a look at this exclusive clip of what Alexandra Morton, a Canadian biologist who has studied Pacific salmon for the last 30 years, had to say about recent headlines relating to DFO suppression of the virus research. Hello, Alexandra Morton. I want to give you the backstory on an article that appeared in the Globe and Mail on April 14th. It was about a scientist, Dr. Christy Miller, who found a virus called PRV in a salmon farm off Tofino in Toloquia territory. What she found was the virus PRV, which we now know is from Norway, was causing severe disease in Chinook salmon. It was filling the red blood cells with virus. The red blood cells were bursting and this was causing organ failure in these fish. And what the article said is that DFO hid this research from the public for 10 years. It was not until a lawyer, Sean Jones, gathered an enormous amount of evidence and took it to the Federal Information Commissioner and got a decision that yes, this research should be made public. It is against the law in Canada to transfer a fish that is carrying a disease agent into the ocean. DFO to this day refuses to admit that the virus PRV is a disease agent. Now, why would they do this? Well, all I know is that- It shouldn't come as a surprise to hear governments suppressing information from the public. However, seeing proof of it happened can still actually seat you back. In an internal DFO email obtained here, you can see a DFO regional aquaculture manager writing in a response to an infectious disease report, can't we tell the public it was mouth rot and not something scary and infectious to wild fish. In another internal DFO email obtained here, shows DFO senior research scientist in salmon genetics, Dr. Miller Saunders, summarized the results of the work she had been communicating to DFO aquaculture staff for over a year on mouth rot and the survival population impact of wild salmon. She was subsequently asked by a DFO science director to summarize it further in the form of a briefing note for a ministerial briefing where in the course of the day, serious and realistic concerns were changed to unpublished results suggest link and paper in progress 
by Senior DFO Aquaculture Management. On June 30th, 2022, 79 BC Salmon Farm licenses are set to expire and the DFO, ultimately led by newly appointed Minister Joyce Murray, has to decide whether these licenses will be reissued. Joyce Murray has a mandate from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to phase out open net industrial fish farms off the coast of British Columbia by 2025. This final decision on whether to reissue these licenses rests on Murray as she works with Indigenous communities that are both for removing open pen fish farms to save wild salmon and for keeping open net fish farms to save jobs and the economies of coastal communities. Also, while appeasing farm salmon companies and commercial fishermen in BC, also while utilizing scientific research that is officially presented to her, from her own department on how to save wild salmon populations in British Columbia. If you are interested in diving further into this, we have provided some resourceful links below this video. If you are not already, be sure to subscribe to our 3 Minute Market Insight using the sign up form below to keep tuned in to all upcoming market insights. Thank you for joining me for the Tradex Foods 3 Minute Market Insight. This is Robert Ryerson reminding you to stay safe, buy smart and eat more seafood.